Hi, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone online. I'm very happy uh, to be here on behalf of Vatsala to, to be giving you this short uh, presentation. Uh, first of all, my name is Nicholas Young. I'm the Energy Business Director for North and Southeast Asia for Vatsala, currently located in, in Singapore. And today we will talk about flexibility. Uh, why flexibility, I think, is, is something that we, we need to be aware of, especially when now the region we are, Singapore and Southeast Asia, we are in this energy transition. Uh, what, what is happening, why this is happening, and how to solve that, how to enable the transition. So that's why we are going to, to look in a couple of slides. So let me give you. Okay. Yes, sorry. On the next slide, so just wanted to give you a bit of, of overview about Vatsala. Uh, as you can see, Vatsala has a long history, um, founded in 1834. And, uh, and we have more than 19,000 people worldwide of 140 nationalities and in over 200 locations. So we are really truly a global company in the marine and the energy business. So first, what kind of uh, solution do we, do we have for our customer in the market? So first, we have our future-proof flexible power plant based on our internal combustion engine, which can run on various fuel, gas, LPG, biogas, LNG, synthetic fuel, and of course, they can be a dual fuel, meaning that they can also run on both either gas or liquid fuel. Also, we have our another flexible technology, which is the energy storage, where we can actually provide utility scale energy storage solution, ESS, together with GEMS. GEMS is our advanced energy management system. And in addition to that, we can also do optimization, meaning that together with our GEM software, uh, we are able to combine various operating assets to create what we call, you know, the uh, the uh, hybrid assets when you can have uh, engine power plant with storage or storage with solar. So this is something that we can offer. And of course, all of that we also help our customer in that journey so after we have sell uh, those solutions we are also here to support them in terms of life cycle services and asset management meaning the maintenance and the operation and maintenance that we have for those plants so this is our global footprint we have more than 72 gigawatt of installed capacity of power plant in 180 countries worldwide you can see that in our, in our area, we call Middle East and Asia, we have close to 40 gigawatt alone, and it's it's actually across utilities, IPPs, industries, municipalities. So really, we cover the whole uh, value chain in terms of power generation. Then in terms of uh, energy storage, we have over 70 installations worldwide that we have we have done. Uh, we have actually acquired the uh, the energy storage capabilities through the acquisition of Greensmith Energy uh, three years three years ago, and this is the, the the global footprint that we have. And you can see in Southeast Asia, we have actually now under construction uh, more than 190 megawatt 190 megawatt hour project. And I think some of you will notice that we have a is is a reference in, in, in Singapore, which is a 2.4 2 megawatt and 2.4 megawatt hour energy storage project that we are currently now uh, executing. So, so talking about this uh, project, I just wanted to uh, to give you a sm small uh, background. So, so a couple of years ago, there was this uh, energy storage test bed uh, that was launched by EMA and uh, SP Group. So as you can see here, we have worked with Sunsip to actually to deliver uh, this, this solution. As you can see, 
uh, on this picture, the uh, our containerized solution, which is called a grid solve, is now being lowered and being placed on site in the substation. And you can see at the back um, the uh, the HDB flats. So so this is something that is uh, currently under under execution, and we are very proud to be actually be delivering with our partner Sunship the first utility scale in a digital storage project in in Singapore because we believe that this is something that will enable Singapore to in the in a transition where Singapore wants to build a low carbon future and this project will 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 be equipped with GridSolve our containerized solution for force deployment and flexibility on site it will also consist of our uh, gems which is an advanced energy management software and and when this will be in operation it will help uh, Singapore to actually uh, investigate the ESS technology, what kind of impact it will have on Singapore grid, what kind of impact uh, will the hot and humid weather of Singapore have, and most importantly, it will help to 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 write or to produce uh, ESS regulation for future development. So this is something that we are very proud, and we are currently in the uh, execution phase. Okay, so so now we have took an overview about what we in terms of our reference, what we are doing in Singapore, but now let's let's take a step back and and see what is happening in the world in terms of the energy transition. So so right now, price alone is really driving the whole world and of course our region that was more and more renewable. I think every other day in the news you can see that there are new renewable project that is coming online or being awarded. We very uh, low tariffs such as for wind, for solar, and yeah, for example, most recently there was this uh, award of one gigawatt of uh, of solar uh, PPA for 20, 20 years in Myanmar, for example, and an average price I read in the news was about four cents, US cents per kilowatt hour. So really, uh, the, the market is, is really, you know, gearing up towards um, more renewable. Uh, as you can see here from the graph that really you, you can see this trend, this energy transition that that really in the past there was not much renewable and now renewable is really coming coming more and more online and it's something that we we need to be prepared for that so so what what effect really that the the renewable actually have on on the existing assets on the existing fleet that you have in in your portfolio so because of more and more renewable is coming to the system, it will mean that the typical base load, the typical thermal base load will see more and more less utilization. So for example, here you will see that for various countries that the average fleet utilization for the CCGT, the, the combined cycle gas turbine is actually decreasing more and more year on year. And same for, 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 the, for the coal power plant. And that's why this is a, an impact that we are seeing that renewable is having on those traditional inflexible uh, thermal plants. So this is a bit of some forecast that 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 Bloomberg New Energy Outlook has has presented is that because of the impact of renewable in in the system, what will happen that we are predicting that not we, but they are predicting that there will be a, an annual increase in the capacity for flexible generation because of the integration of more and more renewable in the system. And uh, as I mentioned, that's where there will be lower demand for, for base load gas, and we will see more and more demand for, for picker gas. So what does it mean is that the role of gas will change as we know it. The role of gas will now move from base load gas to peaking gas because of renewable, where renewable will become one day, uh, depending on the countries you're looking at, will become the new base load. So when renewable become the new base load, you will need to have more flexible generation. And that's where the role of gas will change from base load gas to peaker gas, flexible gas, and that's why together within the storage, these will help 
the current energy transition that we are seeing in the market. So, so really, so now you have, you have look at what is happening globally in in the market. That that you can see that the utilization rate of traditional thermal power generation is is decreasing. So, how can we uh, support the market? How can we help this integration of renewable? So, what exactly we mean that that is what actually we mean that flexible power plant. What a flexible power plant actually can do to solve the um, the let's say the the, the, uh, the issue that is now bringing up by more, more more and more renewable in the system. So, first of all, your a flexible power plant will need. In our case, the engine power plant will need to have number one fast startup. So, meaning that when you need to actually have uh, a command to actually to start up, so we actually can be online in less than thirty seconds, and from zero percent load to hundred percent load, we can do that in two minutes. So, meaning is that when we are we are called to to ramp up, we are ramp up within two minutes, and I think that's the important part. And then, of course. When we need to to do the base load, we are there. We have the one of the highest symbol cycle efficiency, and and of course after that, because our our engine power plant we have many um, what we call many uh, many units, we are able actually to to provide the right optimal efficiency at any time. So for example, if you have a hundred megawatt power plant of continuum of ten units, so if you need fifty megawatt you will actually shut down five engine and actually run the, the other five engine on maximum load at 100% load. So this is really what we have in terms of operational flexibility. And, and as you all know that, that wind and solar are very much, they fluctuate. So, if, so what do you do when suddenly the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine? You can actually just press on the engine and then it ramp up. And then what we call is it can follow the load and in some cases, in, in in Texas, in the wind corridor, we have plants who actually are we, we call them wind chasers. So they chase the wind. What do we mean by that? It means it follows the load. So when the wind goes down, the engine goes up, and once the engine pick up uh, the the wind, sorry, pick up the engine, it goes down. So really, that is what we mean. We follow the load. So we we follow what the renewables are doing. And of course, when the renewable is there at uh, you know at full scale. We can then go on to uh, low load operation and you know basically without having uh, zero emission zero fuel cost because you need to be ready when you're coal and and of course if we are fast to to start we also need to be fast to stop so because you don't want to generate more than you're needed to so but that's also something that that we we have so really these are all the key feature of uh, of our engine technology and that's why it makes our technology suitable to be a flexible generation to be able to enable more renewable in the grid so so we have looked at the gas engine um, technology so now let's look a bit at the renewable so plus storage so we can see that more and more uh, storage project is coming online. And, and as you can see here, this gives you a kind of a snapshot of what energy storage can do. It can, can provide you with uh, uh, frequency response, ramp rate control, smoothing, firming, and shifting, and, and all that. It has different um, in a ESS sizing. And that's why we have we our uh, as a ESS integrator, we come into the picture because we are technology neutral, meaning that we have integrated more than 10 uh, battery OEMs and more than 15 uh, inverter OEM, meaning that we will choose the best of what is there on the market based on the pricing, based on ethical aspect, of course, based on the use case, uh, meaning that we will be very, very, you know, looking at what the customer needs and what is the problem, and then we will offer a tailor-made solution uh, to, to, to them. So, so really, that's where you can see that with the influx of renewable, and that's where the storage is coming, and we are able to offer offer this also to our to our customer.
So, so for me, uh, I have reached the, the end of our presentation. I would just to like to to end on 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 these slides, where right now we are right now in the energy transition for the whole world, also in Southeast Asia, and for us, how we Vatsala we visualize the energy transition is that renewable will be the new base load. And then what will happen? The role of gas will change, will become flexible gas. And then we will have more and more storage. And all this combination of base load, renewable, flexible, flexible gas and storage will then lead to uh, limitless flexibility. And that's why, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to actually to to invite you to our booth to visit us and ask us questions, challenge us, and ask us more questions about you know flexibility, about the energy transition. And we are happy to actually to have a chat with you uh, over at our virtual booth later. So on this, I thank you very much, and uh, we still have some time for some questions. So I will still be here. If you have some question, please feel free to ask. Or if not, uh, you can go to our booth and to meet our expert who is uh, waiting for you. Thank you.